Hi there. HBO just made another big wave of casting announcements for the Game of Thrones prequel series, House of the Dragon. Announced seven new actors all in one big burst. I want to give all of them adequate coverage, so I've split my report on this into three separate videos. This is the third and final one. That the first one I covered the Lannister POV character, the second one I covered how strong they cast the father and both sons. This one I'm covering the remaining two small council members. And actually, looking at all seven of these actors and their roles, I realize that the through line is they're all small council members. With the exception of Harwin Strong, his father and younger brother become small council members, but I think they just threw him in because he, you know, the rest of his family's there, might as well include him. The through line here is they're all small council members. And because I already covered two in the first one, the Lannister POV plus his wife's uncle Harold is Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, so I mentioned him as part of the Lannister family tree. Two guys there plus three men from House Strong, that's already five out of seven. So in this video, I'm going to cover the remaining two actors, who are the Grand Maester and Master of Coin, and then I'm going to end with um, the end for all three report videos, sort of an overview analysis of who have they cast, who will they cast, and when exactly is season one going to end based on this. Because there's one or two new small council members that join right before the Civil War starts, who they haven't announced yet. And we're still not sure if the Civil War will begin in the Season 1 finale, or Season 2 premiere, or whether they're going to spend Season 2 rounding out these characters more, which I think they should. Because otherwise they'd have to skip a decade of internal story time. But first the two remaining actors from this announcement. Both of them are British actors, and both of them are actually exactly 76 years old. Start with, we have David Horovich as Grand Maester Melos. Melos is a trusted and honorable and more or less politically neutral advisor on the small council. He, he wants to maintain peace and stability in the realm. He's faithful to King Viserys. His biggest thing in the story is he's one of the key voices on arguing for the arranged marriage between Rhaenyra and Laenor Valarian, that this will heal the rift in the realm. There were some fears of a civil war, or at least, you know, political rivalries, political blocks forming, that on paper it is logical if we have two rival heirs to the throne and Rhaenyra, well, Viserys' bloodline won out over Laenor, maybe we should marry Laenor to your daughter to heal the rift in the realm. So this isn't biased or anything. It was a good argument. It's still, it's this loveless arranged marriage that neither of them wanted, that their parents pressured them into. Melos is famously, because we're, we're dealing with an outline, the prequel novellas are an outline, but what dialogue scenes Melos did get. He's the one who has that quip when someone points out th there's one objection, but Lenor doesn't enjoy the company of women. He surrounds himself with squires his own age and seems to prefer their company. That Melos just quips, what of it? I am not fond of fish, but when fish is served, I eat it. So he's this respected Grand Maester on the council. We're used to Pycelle being Grand Maester, who is corrupt and a Lannister loyalist. You shouldn't walk into this with those biases that, you know, Melos is actually a faithful and trustworthy, honorable advisor and elder statesman. As for the actor David Horovich, he has done TV and film, but he's mostly had a distinguished career as a theater actor long and distinguished theater career. You know, Royal Shakespeare, he's played Prospero in The Tempest, he's done King Lear. I mean, when you look at a profile of him, like on, on wikis and stuff, they say the thing most people would recognize him from is when he has done TV. Uh, he's most famous for being Inspector Slack in the Miss Marple shows. 
but that that's a thing we've been dealing with uh, casting for this show in general, that they have a healthy mix of people we recognize from TV and film and theater actors. They're not unknowns, it's just it's not televised, so how would an international audience know about it? Like Emma Darcy, they're predominantly a theater actor. I covered that in my report on that. No, Emma has a lot of experience just as a theater actor. Eve Best, who plays Rainies, again, mostly theater, has done TV, and some people know her from that. But I was impressed at, wow, you, you did Cleopatra at the Shakespeare Globe in the title role? So some of the people we're seeing are theater actors, and I was impressed that during the pandemic, to pass the time because the theaters were closed, David Horovich has a YouTube channel, which I'll link to, where he's been making YouTube videos where he acts out Shakespearean sonnets. Not, not like with the stage or anything, just he delivers Shakespearean sonnets one at a time in videos to get through all of this. So that was impressive that he's a big Shakespeare actor. Actually, it did leak out a couple of weeks ago that David Horovich had been cast in this show. We just didn't know for what. That uh, a news site mentioned, oh, he's been cast in House of the Dragon. I didn't report on it because I, I didn't know what it was. It could have been a minor role. And we were wondering, well, is he a Grand Maester type? Or maybe he's Lyman Beesbury. Turns out he's the Grand Maester. And you see our confusion there that turns out he's the exact same age as the guy they did cast as Lyman Beesbury. You know, that elder statesman type. Which leads me into the actor that they did cast as Lyman. So this is the last actor out of this seven-actor announcement. Bill Patterson as Lyman Beesbury, the Master of Coin. He is a longtime member of the council. He actually joined when Jaehaerys was still king, Viserys' predecessor. And he stays Master of Coin all the way through the end of Viserys' reign. There's one or two points where he goes like on a year-long break or something, and they let Daemon play around with it. He hates it, so Lyman comes back. But the way they phrase it is, with one or two exceptions, where that happens with other characters, like um, with one of the Tully hands of the king, that like if your wife died or a, a new child was born, you'll you'll go on break for a year, but then you'll come back. That with limited interruption, he has been master of coin for thirty years. That he he starts in the later days of Jaehaerys, and is just master of coin throughout Viserys' run, while other people are getting changed in and out. He is a mainstay of the council. Uh, he's Lord of Honeyholt, which is a castle in the south of the Reach. You don't really need to know the rest of his family. And the big thing with Lyman is, because he's been there since the beginning, he is very faithful to Viserys, and wants to honor his wishes that Viserys made everyone swear oaths. My oldest child, Rhaenyra, even though she's a daughter, she is my heir for the Iron Throne, not her younger half-brother. That everyone swore oaths to that. And the Greens, Allison's faction, try to go, oh yeah, that was a while ago, or oh no, there was precedence from councils. It's he's, He points out, I swore an oath to Viserys, you all did, that was supposed to undo what the Great Council did about, oh, oh, male precedent and stuff. So it's not, oh, he's a political opportunist. It's he genuinely believes and is faithful to the vows he took that we established this with when Viserys made us all promise that. So he is one of the pro Rhaenyra voices on the Council because he's one of the pro Viserys voices. He was faithful to her father, this trusted old retainer. As for Bill Patterson, the actor, I looked up his profile, and he has this 40, 50-year-long career. He's been in everything. He's been in everything as a third-tier character, but with important speaking lines. He's that guy you see in two or three meaningful scenes in, like, every movie and every TV show, basically a Lyman Beesbury scale character, where you would remember him, he has dialogue, you wouldn't even call him a secondary guy, but he's in it, and he's been in everything. I mean, just off the top of my head here, looking through the list, he was in 
Terry Gilliam's 1987 film The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. He was in the 1990 adaptation of Roald Dahl's The Witches, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory author, the 1990 version of The Witches, the classic movie, and not any remake or anything. And he was just like one of the kid's parents, but, but he was in it. The big thing that stood out for me was he was in the 1995 film adaptation of Shakespeare's Richard III by Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen's Richard III, where they, they did it all as a fascist allegory thing with the set designs and everything, and he was one of Richard III's advisors, so also a role with speaking lines. So not necessarily even the second-tier guy, but a third-tier guy who has scenes, and he's been in all of these famous movies and TV shows. Uh, more recently, he had a role in Neil Gaiman's Good Omens TV adaptation. And just recently, Bill Patterson appeared in Outlander, the TV adaptation of Outlander, and yes, he shared scenes with Graham McTavish. I don't think he had a lot of scenes with him, but you know, we have a screenshot. He was on screen with Graham McTavish, who is going to play Harold Westerling, another small council member, the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. So <laughs> that's nice. This isn't even the biggest thing that I kept going. I remember this guy from somewhere. Saving the best for last. Bill Patterson was in an episode of Doctor Who during the run of Matt Smith as a prominent guest star for that episode. He was in Matt Smith's Doctor Who uh, for season five of the Return series, the first season with Matt Smith. Remember that episode, Victory of the Daleks, where they go back to Blitz London and they meet Winston Churchill, who goes, oh, we have this scientist who just invented all of these new robots to fight the Nazis. And when they see them, they go, those are Daleks. He goes, no, no, they're Ironsides. This is the scientist that invented them. Bill Patterson played the scientist who created the Ironsides. And then there's that moment where they go, no, we created you. And they reveal that they killed a scientist, replaced him with a robot double with all of his memories, and programmed him to build more Daleks. So two prominent guest stars in that, Churchill and the scientist. Bill Patterson played that scientist. He is a prominent guest star with many primary one-on-one -on -one scenes exchanging dialogue with Matt Smith. So just the, the, the fan in me is all giddy over this. Oh, they were in a thing before. And he, but the doctor convinced him that, no, you can still be a good person. You have all your memories. That's you. And he turns on the Daleks, and he shows up again in the season finale, helping Churchill. So I'm just wondering, has every third person in Britain by this point appeared in Doctor Who. It, it seems like that. A lot of the other cast members have connections to it. Even indirectly, like Olivia Cook started out as Christopher Eccleston's daughter as a minor role in a TV show he was doing, Blackout. It was her first thing ever. She was still in high school. She hadn't gone to drama school. And because Christopher Eccleston's a really stand-up guy, he really helps out other actors and with, tries to help with the abuse on set, tries to help actors' unions. And when another... Uh, TV show, this adaptation of a ghost story, was being made, uh, The Secret of Crickley Hall, he recommended her to the producer who he knew. He didn't need to recommend her. She didn't apply. He just mentioned, oh, there's this really great young actress, this young girl who I've been working with in my show. She, she plays my daughter. You should consider her. And that really got her career going. She got her career started by the Ninth Doctor actor. And she's in the show, and so is Matt Smith, the Eleventh Doctor. So that's the last of the casting announcements. David Horovich as Grand Maester Melos, Bill Patterson as Lyman Beesbury. As I said, this rounds out the small council under Viserys during the beginning of his reign. As for everyone else they cast, it's clear that these are the adult versions of these characters, that Jefferson Hall as Tyland Lannister, he's 44 years old. So he's not going to be in those flashback or early season scenes that we saw with Millie Alcock as young Rhaenyra. No, he is clearly playing adult Tyland opposite adult Rhaenyra, played by Emma Darcy. There's no problem with that. Obviously, season one will cover 
30 years, it will start with young Rhaenyra, then older Rhaenyra. It's entirely possible that they also cast a young Tyland, and they just haven't announced him yet to avoid confusion, and it wouldn't be that big of a role. It'd be like a cameo in, in episode like three before they switch to Jefferson Hall as adult Tyland for the rest of the run. So this doesn't rule out that we might see a young Tyland a little. 